Hi everyone, welcome to Fusion PTAX, a student-led webinar on fusion science and technology. My name is Tobias Jeche and I'm delighted to introduce today's speaker, Neeraj Kumar. Neeraj studied his undergraduate degree in physics at the University of Delhi in India. Then he completed his master in nuclear science and technology at the same university. He finished his PhD, as a PhD student at I Marseille University in collaboration with the ITER organization. And presently, he is working as a postdoctoral research associate at the University of Colorado Boulder, working on understanding of turbulent and impurity transport in the edge pedestal of these 3D plasma. Today, Neeraj will explain his work to advance understanding of the dominant transport mechanism in the central region of a tokamak plasma. And without further delay, I would like to thank everybody for zooming in today. And I will unmute myself and hand over to Neeraj. Welcome and everybody and enjoy the talk. Okay, thanks Tobias uh, for the nice introduction. And uh, I'm also would like to thank uh, Ika for uh, inviting me for this uh, talk to present my PhD work. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, analysis of turbulent transport in the central part of high confinement tokoma plasma. And this uh, work uh, is uh, related to my PhD work uh, and not uh, what I'm doing right now as a postdoc. And it will be uh, excited to present my postdoc work in the future. So before I start, I would like to thank all my PhD supervisors, uh, Jan, Alberto, Clarice, and uh, Cedri uh, for, uh, during this PhD. So, So uh, I have prepared some introductory slides uh, for the general audience who is not familiar with the tokomak and the fusion. So let's start with the plasma and the fusion first. Uh, most of you already might familiar that uh, the most feasible nuclear fusion reaction on the earth is uh, deuterium and tritium. It requires lowest pressure and energy confinement time at, uh, at low uh, pressure uh, as compared to other reactions of interest. And it requires around 150 million degrees Celsius of temperature to co overcome the electrostatic Coulomb repulsion between two positively charged nuclei. And the schematic of this DT reaction is shown here. As we can see that deuterium and tritium fuse together to form a heavier nucleus such as helium and some atomic particles such as a neutron by releasing energy in the process from Einstein's mass energy equivalence relation. In order to keep the temperature up, we need to heat up the plasma. And in order for the reaction to be self-sustained, we need helium to uh, confine and transfer its energy to deuterium tritium since neutron is a neutral particle and it collide much less. And on the earth, we are trying to achieve controlled thermonuclear fusion for a long time since it could be safe and clean. And uh, so we use a uh, magnetic field, uh, very large magnetic field in order to confine hot plasma away from the material walls. And this uh, scheme of confinement is uh, known as magnetic fusion. And the device that we used uh, to achieve this magnetic fusion on the earth is a tokomak. It is a toroidal symmetric device. This is the toroidal direction that we can see in this figure. And since toroidal alone, uh, magnetic field alone leads to loss of uh, particles due to various drift present in a system. So an additional colloidal magnetic field is created by inducing plasma current uh, uh, by the central solenoid that we can see in this curve. And the two toroidal and colloidal magnetic field we can see in this magenta and this green curve. And this uh, combination of this toroidal and colloidal magnetic field results in a helical field lines, which is spanning around the closed nested toroidal surfaces. And these surfaces of uh, co uh, constant flux uh, are called flux surfaces or uh, magnetic surfaces. And indeed, there, there are other magnetic configurations such as stellator in which uh, these helical field lines are obtained using complex adjustment of magnets. The one which has been chosen for ITER and for this thesis work is a tokomak. And uh, this helicity of these magnetic field lines on a particular fl uh, flux surfaces is uh, normally described by a factor, which is uh, known as safety factor, which is defined like this, where this cap small r and capital R is the minor and major radius. And this uh, B e, a phi and B theta is a uh, toroidal and polyidal magnetic field. 
And in this thesis, uh, I have uh, simulated two tokomak. The first one is the jet tokomak, which uh, presently exists. And it is the uh, presently the largest present running tokomak. Well, JT60 also is also same size. It has a plasma volume of 100 cubic meter. I have compared my results with this existing uh, toko one, uh, existing tokomak. And I have also made predictions for ETER, uh, ETER which is uh, under construction at uh, Cadrach in south of France. And the uh, general goal of ETER is to demonstrate the scientific and technological feasibility uh, to demonstrate the electricity production from fusion. And it is designed to achieve a fusion gain of 10, with, uh, uh, fusion gain of 10 to generate 500 megawatt of uh, fusion power for 50 megawatt of input heating power for 400 seconds. And it will be the largest ever built tokomak with the twice the size of jet tokomak and uh, eight times larger plasma volume and then jet tokomak. And if uh, I take a colloidal cross section of this ether tokomak, uh, in the center, we have a very large temperature of millions of uh, degrees Celsius and it drops towards surfaces. And because of this, there exists a very large temperature gradient and heat and particle move towards outward. And they follow magnetic field lines and falls on these two targets, which are called diverted targets. And the target heat loads on these diverted targets uh, is of the order of uh, like very 10 megawatt per meter square. This is a target load. So we need a material that can sustain such a large heat loads. So we have already good tokamak working experience with carbon for a long time. However, the problem with carbon is of tritium retention for a tokamak uh, operation with the deuterium and tritium. And since tritium is a radioactive material, it creates an additional problem of handling of these radioactive materials. And also tritium is very, it has very short half life. So we cannot uh, like lose this uh, very expensive uh, material or fuel. So we need material, uh, we need a material that do not retain much tritium and uh, erode. And texan is the preferred choice for this purpose. Apart from low tritium retention and erosion, texan has also very high melting temperature and capacity to sustain large heat loads. However, apart from these uh, advantages, the issue with tungsten is of large rigidity power losses from the plasma. Since tungsten atoms are not fully ionized, even at fusion relevant temperatures, so it emits line radiation that will cool down the central plasma temperature, which is not good, which is, this is, we don't want. And so a very small amount of tungsten is acceptable in the high temperature core plasma. And this is a like typical concentration. And it has been found that uh, tungsten develops very uh, very peaked core density profiles in some conditions in existing tokamaks such as jet and or AST, ST, STX upgrade. And so will there will be tungsten accumulation in ether? This is still an open question. And as we can see that these diverted targets are located where here. So how we can like predict tungsten accumulation in ether in the core? So to understand tungsten transport, uh, we can solve this 1D transport equation continuity, which is given here. The first term is the rate of change of tungsten density with time. Second term is the divergence of tungsten flux. And this last term is the source or sinks present in the system. And this tungsten particle flux is, is further decomposed into is a, is a like some of a neoclassical contributions due to collisions between atoms and uh, turbulent transport, uh, which is uh, due to gradients of density or temperature present in a system. And it is, and there are free micro, uh, like free energy sources that can drive micro instabilities, which can lead to uh, tungsten trans, uh, this turbulent transport. And so we can again, uh, so total tungsten particle fluxes, uh, we can write like this as a particular radial location. And this, Fluxes can be further decomposed into diffusive part and uh, convective part, which is also called pinch velocity. And this neoclassical pinch velocity also depends on this term, which is the Z. So we can see that if we have a large main ion density gradients, it leads to an inward pinch of tungsten atoms, which will peak the tungsten density profiles in the core. However, at the same time, if we have a large main ion temperature gradients, it will lead to an outward pinch of tungsten. 
and it will flatten the tungsten density profiles. So it's a, like a complex between balance between main and density gradients and temperature gradients. And this turbulent diffusion also depends on the gradients of main ion density and temperature profile. So tungsten accumulation in the central core uh, like it depends on the complex uh, balance between neoclassical and turbulent transport. And therefore, to predict the tungsten density, uh, uh, tungsten core transport behavior accurately in the inner core, one must have information uh, about uh, the gradients of main ion density and main ion temperatures. So the goal of this work was to investigate the turbulent transport in the inner core region. And if I inner core region means uh, just if I plot this uh, electron density, this is just a typical plot to show you how this uh, this inner core region means. If I plot as a function of rho, which is toroidal flux coordinate, so inner core region means I'm talking about this region, which is close to the magnetic axis. So, and why this work is understand because prediction of uh, like turbulent transport accurately in the central part is important for tungsten accumulation behavior and strategies to plan uh, avoid tungsten accumulation and predicting turbulent transport is also very important for the fusion reaction rate in this region however previous studies mostly focus on the mid and air core region which is a row greater than 0.3 and this area has not been explored extensively so far so i'm going to talk about this thing in more details now so this is my rest of time. Uh, first of, uh, after that, I'll present a linear uh, uh, results in linear stability analysis to find the instabilities at bay. And then I'll present non-linear simulation results uh, to access the label of turbulent fluxes since turbulent fluxes are highly non-linear in nature. And then I'll uh, finish with my conclusion and future perspectives of uh, this work. So, even the ultimate goal of this work was to understand the tungsten transport. However, we have started with, a, a, like we have selected a specific well-diagnosed uh, carbon wool era of jet, uh, uh, jet tokamak hybrid discharge 75225 with no sawtooth first. And uh, we have selected these discharges because uh, they have better diagnostic measurements and they are well documented in this paper for rho greater than 0.3. So they are like well documented in the mid and uh, outer core regions. And since this is very new work, so it's important to understand the physical mechanism first and then predict and uh, go to that uh, tungsten part in the inner core region. So that is why we are using this uh, jet walls of carbon wall era and not tungsten. And the code that we use to simulate this uh, turbulent transport is the gyrokinetic uh, code GKW. It's five-dimensional gyrokinetic model and it's a local flux tube with a fully electromagnetic. And uh, simulations uh, are performed for three species, deuterium, electron, and carbon. And we kept uh, fast ions uh, in some cases, and it also includes magnetic equilibrium, which is Miller parameters, because uh, we, uh, Miller is uh, like a geometry which uh, yeah, define the magnetic equilibrium with uh, some finite uh, shape with like elongation triangularity. So we, that is why we use the Miller. And simulations also include these collisions, rotations, and electromagnetic fluctuation of A parallel, which is vector potential, and B parallel, which is magnetic compression part. And uh, input plasma profiles uh, for this discharge for uh, electron density, electron temperature, and Q uh, profile, which is safety factor profile as a function of rho is given here and in this plot these blue points are the experimental data points that are uh, with error bar that are fitted with a recently developed fitting tool which is called gpr fit and as we can see that when we are moving towards uh, core profiles are quite fl uh, flatter so gradients are very smaller in the inner core region and uh, these are the normalized input parameters in GKW units at uh, three different radial locations. And the region we want to focus on is the center region, which is 0.15. And the specificity of this region is that it, it has a radial lower main and temperature gradient as compared to outer part. It has slightly lower TE by TE ratio and slightly uh, peak electron density profile. Plasma beta is very high 
uh, in the inner core in for this uh, like in this hybrid discharges, which is also a specificity of these hybrid discharges. And safety factor profile is uh, flat but slightly above than uh, one, which is, like prevent destabilization of large MHT activities. And uh, Magnetic shear, actually the nominal value of magnetic shear was around 0.1. It has been increased to 0.05 at this radial location. And, and it has a very high uh, like a toroidal rotation with the Mach number of 0.31. Uh, before presenting uh, results about this jet, jet discharge, I will talk about the importance of electromagnetic effects first. So the extent of electromagnetic uh, effects is characterized by a parameter which is called plasma beta. And this is defined as the ratio of plasma pressure to magnetic pressure. And if I plot plasma beta, uh, uh, like growth rate as a function of uh, this beta, just to point out, these are just like some standard cases and these are not that um, jet discharges. I'm just presenting to explain this, uh, what is how this plasma beta is important. So we can see that uh, when beta is low or uh, beta is zero, uh, we have typically ITG uh, instabilities, ITG mode, which is ion temperature gradient mode. And these are electrostatic instabilities um, driven by the ion temperature gradient. And when beta uh, increases or and it comes into picture, we have other electromagnetic modes such as KBM, which is kinetic ballooning modes, which is characterized by this uh, like jump in the frequency, uh, positive frequency. And KBM is an electromagnetic instability, which is in, uh, like uh, generated by the uh, final pressure gradient, last pressure gradients. And why I'm presenting this? Because depending on different kind of instabilities, different level of turbulent transport can be driven in the system. So it's important to like uh, identify what are the dominant modes in a tokomak, and then we can. Uh, understand how turbulent transport level will be driven in these uh, tokomak plasmas. So after that, uh, I'm going to like present about some linear stabilities and also uh, the impact of uh, kinetic fast ions. So kinetic fast ions uh, from NBI are assumed with Maxwellian distribution function. And just to let you know that uh, fast ion profile is modeled using pencil analysis, which is the default in jet case at that time. And to understand the impact of fast ion population, uh, I uh, like performed three set of simulations. The first case is the thermal ions only and no fast ion pressure in the magnetic equilibrium. And in the second case, uh, I kept uh, fast ion pressure in uh, uh, magnetic equilibrium only, but not as a fast ion species. And in third case, I kept both uh, fast ion pressure in the magnetic equilibrium and fast ion as a kinetic species. And when I'm talking about uh, fast ion as kinetic species, it means I am uh, including kinetic fast ions as a fourth extra species in gyrokinetic equation. So we will have like four species, uh, not N3, just to clarify. And the uh, impact of these uh, two different equilibria with and without fast ion pressure is of uh, like uh, have a rather large. Uh, gradient of total pressure, which is beta prime and of the center flux surfaces. When we include a uh, fast ion pressure uh, in the magnetic equilibrium that we can see it here for rho greater than 0.3. So after that, I have performed uh, linear gyrokinetic simulations at a radial location 0.15. And I plotted growth rate as a function of uh, K theta rho i, which is bin uh, colloidal uh, binormal wave vector. And again, these are three different cases. And we can see that at the radial location 0.3, uh, all linearly unstable mode rotates in ion diaminetic drift direction, which is uh, considered positive in GKW. And they have a, a larger uh, positive frequency than their linear growth rate. And these uh, unstable modes are identified as KBM, which is kinetic ballooning modes. And I will come to this point. Uh, I'll talk about this point later. And if we include uh, the fast ion pressure in the magnetic equilibrium that we can see that uh, by this uh, blue curve, it has no impact on the mode growth rate simply because it has no impact on Miller parameters that we saw in the previous slide at this radial location. 
uh, and including kinetic fast ions as four textile species in gyrokinetic simulations uh, decreases the growth rate by 20 to 25% that we can see this by uh, red curve here. And at lowest k theta rho i, uh, stable micro tearing modes are also identified, which are characterized by this negative frequency and uh, um, uh, uh, positive uh, and positive parity for vector potential fluctuations. And these modes are stable linearly. The, uh, it means these are sub, you know, subdominant mode linearly, but they will matter for the quasi linear analysis uh, part. Maybe I'll talk uh, about later. And after that, I also plotted, uh, I did a full radi uh, radial scan and I plotted a maximum growth rate at each radial location as a function of uh, rho. And we can see that in the inner core uh, region, the dominant uh, modes are KBM, which are shown by this full symbol. And at mid and outer radius, they change it to open symbol that we can see again this by simple this magenta curve. And, and if we include kinetic, uh, fast time that is shown by this uh, red curve it has always a stabilizing impact on the mode growth rate except at row 0.33 at uh, row 0.33 there in, there, are, there was a fast ion driven mode that was excited by the kinetic fast ions and it was identified as ba kbm in previous uh, citrine and garcia paper and uh, fast ion pressure in the magnetic uh, equilibrium, uh, it leads to stabilization uh, for KBM that can see with this blue curve, and it leads to destabilization for ITG. And since there is all, there was error bar in the input profile, so there is always uncertainty in, in the input parameters. So after that, I have uh, performed some like sensitivity scans to these input gradients, and I plotted growth rate as a function of RLPI, which is main and pressure gradient. And we can see that these two curves are almost identical, no matter if main and temperature gradient is changed or main and density gradient is changed by keeping one parameter fixed. So it indicates that uh, these unstable modes are uh, driven by main and pressure gradient. And after that, if I plot growth rate as a function of plasma beta, and this uh, vertical curve is the nominal value of plasma beta for these discharges. We can see that uh, when beta is zero or uh, is low, there is no instability present in system. When beta increases uh, above a certain threshold, growth rate increases with increase in plasma beta. Uh, and if you look at growth rate as a function of uh, magnetic shear, we can see that uh, growth rate uh, decreases with increase in uh, absolute value of magnetic shear. At high value of absolute magnetic shear, these modes are completely stabilized. As you can see that, so we can conclude that uh, these high plasma beta and low magnetic shear is the responsible parameter for instabilities at uh, these radial locations. So these uh, all uh, signatures are uh, these signatures. Uh, these are like signatures for uh, KBM, which is kinetic ballooning mode. So after talking about linear results, uh, I'll present some uh, non-linear simulation results uh, for row 0.15 and for the nominal uh, plasma beta case, just to recall the uh, input parameters. In non-linear simulations, we have not kept uh, kinetic fast ions and there is no e cross shearing, just for simplicity. And the perpendicular discretization is very high, which is around 509. Because of low magnetic shear mode structure are extremely elongated the field line. So uh, in order to capture these elongated mode structures, we need very high resolution. And because of this, these simulations were uh, computationally very expensive. And after that, I have plotted this time trace of fine heat flux. And here these uh, fluxes are decomposed into different contributions, such as E cross B part, a parallel part, and magnetic compression part. And this uh, horizontal dotted line represents the time interval that is used to keep the average uh, fluxes. And we can see that, that here, ion heat fluxes are dominated by E cross wave contribution with a negligible contribution from magnetic flutter and magnetic compression part. For electron heat flux, uh, E cross wave contribution is still dominant. But here, the surprising uh, result is that. Uh, that uh, there is a significant contribution uh, coming from magnetic flutter part. 
uh, and it has opposite sign as compared to linear phase uh, uh, in these uh, for this electron heat flux channel. And these results has been published in this paper. So readers are encouraged to read this paper if they are interested to read more about this. And after that, if I just plot this uh, nonlinear heat and particle fluxes in physical unit, and this is uh, the conversion that uh, I used. And here again, these fluxes are con con uh, uh, written as a different contribution here. And this here, this uh, black curve, uh, solid black curve represent that uh, sum of uh, E cross B and A parallel, which is total flux. And we can see that heat fluxes for all channels increases with increase in uh, plasma beta. For ion heat channels, E cross V part is uh, dominant and, and for electron uh, heat channel, E cross V contribution dominate, but magnetic flutter contribution also start to dominate and is comparable to the E cross V part at high plasma beta. And these higher heat and particle fluxes with beta, um, beta are actually qualitatively consistent with the uh, linear destabilization of the KVMs at higher beta that we saw earlier. And to see if these models uh, are working or not, we need to compare these uh, computed nonlinear heat fluxes with uh, experimental power balance fluxes. And uh, these experimental power and balance heat fluxes are computed from Kronos sort of codes, so which is like integrated modeling code. And these are the values of our, these are fluxes here. And we can see that experimental heat flux uh, values are two to three order of magnitude is smaller than this computed uh, nonlinear heat and particle fluxes. What I have not shown here because of time and uh, maybe many audience will not understand that I have computed the, this uncertainty using quasi-linear modeling. And we have found that uh, within the uncertainty on these input gradients such as RLTI, plasma beta and main or electron temperature gradient within this uncertainty, we can match the experimental heat flux values uh, with the quasi-linear modeling. I'm not going to present the quasi-linear modeling in this part. So with this, uh, I would like to conclude that uh, the pressure driving instability in the inner core region is identified as kinetic ballooning mode. And they have extended uh, more structure along the magnetic field line because of the magnetic shear, low magnetic shear. And the param mm, this instability is uh, uh, destabilized due to low magnetic shear and high plasma beta for these hybrid discharges. And then we performed nonlinear simulation and we found that E cross V contribution to ion heat flux is dominant. And however, for electron heat flux, uh, there is a significant magnetic flutter contribution and, uh, to nonlinear heat flux and is much larger and up with a positive sign in nonlinear phase. And nonlinear heat fluxes are much larger than the experimental values and nominal parameters. And this extreme sensitivity and this quasi-linear, uh, we have checked this sensitivity and we found that quasi-linear fluxes are extremely sensitive to input gradients. Within the uncertainty, experimental fluxes were matched with uh, these uh, nonlinear uh, these uh, gyro and these uh, nonlinear fluxes. And so, after talking about this jet. Uh, we have extended uh, some preliminary uh, uh, study to ITER case. And we have found that KVM is also linearly unstable in this ITER conventional H mode scenario in DT with 15 mega amp plasma current and Q is equal to 10. And there are many things that I have not covered in this, so which are present in my this PhD thesis, which is available online. So if you're interested, you can go through this thesis. And just to point out uh, that uh, these discharges was like MST and beta free. So depending on different cases, maybe situation can be changed. And because of time limit, we were not able to conclude the uh, MPOT or uh, tungsten uh, study in this PhD work, but they are going to hire a new PhD student for this work. And maybe we will have more results in the future. And so after that, I just like to, in the last slide, I would like to tell you what are the different opportunities here in the uh, US for fusion uh, in the fusion field for uh, master or PhD or postdoc students and those who are excited. So I'll talk about this uh, where I'm working in. So we are working in the center of integrated plasma study. We have a very diverse group uh, who, uh, who are working on plasma physics, including astroplasma physics, dusty plasma physics and magnetic fusion. 
So you can go to this website and you can find if someone is interested in uh, different uh, work which is going on in plasma physics in this uh, University of Colorado Boulder. And like uh, in the Europe, we have Fusion Net website and US has also like recently launched a website for master student and uh, like to advertise various activities which is going on in master for master student or job opportunities. And this website is called US Fusion Energy website. It's, it is recently launched. So you can read more exciting opportunities that are going in the US by going through this website. And in the fusion, we have also, well, in the whole world is, and there are a lot of startups that are coming, but in US, we have a common world fusion system. So they're building a spark tokamak, which is a spherical compact tokamak that are trying to uh, like uh, demonstrate the net energy production using very so high, so high temperature superconducting magnets. And I think this work is done uh, in collaboration with MIT. Plasma Center, uh, MIT, uh, I don't remember the exact website, but uh, you can read, go through this Commonwealth Fusion System website. And of course, then we have a quite old uh, and very like a uh, very better diagnostics uh, uh, in this T3D tokamak, which is located at General Atomics. So you can also read uh, various opportunities in fusion in these websites. So with this, I would like to thank you all for your kind attention. And if you have any doubt or anything, feel free to text me in the email, which is given in the first slide. Thank you so much. Thank you, Nenash, for your talk. Yes, with this, I would like to open the Q&A sections because you already mentioned questions. There we have the first incoming one, Guido. Okay. <clears throat> um, what can we expect that will happen once uh, ether will be dominated by uh, alpha particle heating, ether and, and later uh, in uh, next step machines, what, what will happen with the turbulence and the core plasma? Yeah, actually, it's a nice question because in uh, like in as compared to present uh, existing devices where this uh, fast particles are generated uh, like externally using some heating systems such as NBI. Either we will have a, like, a, uh, we are expecting, a, at least I will say, hopefully we are expecting a, a fusion generated alpha particles. And as this study state that, uh, is showed that, but again, this was very like a preliminary with a lot of like uh, jumpsets uh, just for simplicity that uh, fast particles can reduce the growth rate. So we are expecting maybe this same situation could be true in the inner core in ether, but uh, I have not performed any study uh, honestly, so we just uh, did like a very preliminary, uh, like a starting study for this ether case. So yeah, uh, if this uh, this true, uh, I cannot say. I mean, then maybe it will be some like positive impact for uh, this uh, uh, ether and maybe fusion devices machine. Okay, thank you. Thank you again. I got one question from the chat before I will go on to punch out. So just a minute, please. Um, and the question is from George, and is React Kinetic fast ions included in the nonlinear simulations? Uh, no, uh, sorry, uh, I think I mentioned maybe briefly, we have not included, and the reason is simply because, you know, nonlinear simulations with kinetic fast ions are prone to numerical instabilities, and then sometimes it's very difficult to go to reach a steady state. So we want to things uh, keep simple, uh, just to start first, and then keep like add, adding more things but at that same, at, at the end, uh, I finished my PhD, so I think uh, maybe this will be work for uh, for some next student. I think this answered your question, George. If not, you can just write me, and I will go into it. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, I will like to Panchal. You can now unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah. So actually, I have. Uh, two questions uh, related to your talk, which was very um, is a nice coherent talk about turbulent transport in core to core plasma. So uh, how the transport means it, it gets modified with uh, double null configuration and how how it benefits um, if it is planned to be operated in a double null configuration. And secondly, if 
this diverter uh, itself is modified in the form like you mentioned about must and other tokomex upcoming which could have a uh, new uh, or more novel diverters like uh, uh, means super x diverters or snowflake where you have uh, extended field lines to put the diverters away from the plasma to minimize your impurity content. So any comment, Neeraj, on these two questions? Thanks. Uh, coming to your first question about double null, uh, I, I have no idea if it is going to use double null and what are the advantages of this double null diverter configuration. So sorry, I don't know about this thing in much details because I wasn't understanding double null transport, not these designs. And uh, coming to your second question about uh, this uh, snowflake configurations or this alternate diverter configuration, so far we see like uh, they have advantages in confinement and maybe reducing some instabilities, uh, like such as QH uh, mode where there is no like this uh, LM instabilities, uh, which like flush out the tungsten in age part, not in the core part. So, well. So th there are many things uh, I think it's still uh, open and it's difficult to answer for each other because I have not uh, completed a study for each other in details. I would like to ask myself a question. Maybe it's just a, a basic question, but on slide eight, you mentioned your shot you're using from Jet was using um, um, a carbon wall, right? Is it correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What did you would you expect if you would have used a, a tungsten wall like what you have made other, like, I guess the input sim data from the simulation would be different, but would we have expected other results or anything else? Uh, I have, which I have not shown here, uh, because, you know, like a tung a tungsten is considered as like a trace species in the simulations and we have a performed simulation. Maybe I have not shown here that uh, including impurities in the system has no impact on mode growth rate. Okay. Yeah, in the at least in the inner core region because the concentration is very low, so it has no impact on this. So, and the same, uh, it will be true for uh, tungsten uh, if we are talking about growth rate. All right, thank you. Okay, there, there we have one question more in the, in the chat. Sorry, I will read it. Um, I have done masters in theoretical plasma physics. Um, can I take part in experimental plasma physics like in tokamak plasma? And um, what basic knowledge I do I have to build up for it? This question from Zahid. Uh, okay. Yes, theoretically, yes, you can. Uh, after doing master, you can go in any field. Theoretical. Uh, uh, okay, you can do actually experimental plasma because it's just master degree. So we have just a broad overview about plasma physics. And what basic knowledge? Actually, I think uh, the basic knowledge you just need like some basic background. After that, I think. Uh, we learn with time. I'm still learning with time. So I think this is the best I can say that uh, we learn with time. And um, by going uh, into this kind of study, you will learn more with time and you will improve further. So after master is not a big thing. Uh, my, uh, my supervisor is the best example. He did his PhD in experimental physics and he did postdoc in few, uh, theoretical and he developed uh, this. Uh, he was the code developer of G this GKW code. So you can always do everything in your life.